I was out working in the front yard this morning and out of the corner of my eye I saw a nice large hawk make an attempt at dive bombing into the chicken yard. It gave up very quickly and left and I realized I wasn't actually nervous or upset about it because overall our chicken yard, this uh, 0.1 acre compost operation driven by chickens, certainly wouldn't call it hawk proof but it's pretty darn hawk resilient after five and a half years of working with these hens and evolving the system, I'd like to share notes on how we don't worry too much about hawks coming in to try to attack our 60 plus hens in this 0.1 acre area. We live in central New York uh, here, zone 5B, in an area where they're certainly conducive to wild bird populations and we see hawks all the time around here. There are lots of birds in this area. Uh, we had one attempted hawk attack about four years ago. I'll show the area where that happened and we uh, made some changes to the fencing to resolve that and since then we've had zero incidents with hawks and part of the overarching design what I'd like to do is look through this look at this idea through the permaculture lens of not just single function solutions to keep hawks away but how can we create multiple layers of benefit so what I mean by that is, for example, in our front yard to the south and east of this whole chicken yard is a absolutely massive pin oak and a white oak. You might say, well, who cares about that? Well, designing our chicken yard to be under these uh, massive trees, it confers protection. You can't imagine a hawk coming in, being able to dive bomb into the space, grab a hen and leave with that much canopy. It also has the additional benefit of all summer casting some incredibly deep, deep shade, keeping our hens cool and comfortable in the heat of the summer. Uh, chickens are jungle birds. Uh, that is their, their ancestry. They evolved under the canopy of uh, dense trees and vines, warmer climates for sure, but this probably has some ancestral recognition for them. It feels like it gives them comfort to have trees this size. So if you're designing from scratch and you can design under massive old trees, your chicken operation, that might be beneficial. Couldn't imagine trying to grow an orchard in here. It's just way too shady for that. So that's one way to help. Starting with huge trees as an overstory, as a foundational design element for our chicken composting yard, we've then added in additional layers of complexity for protection and also for benefit for the hens. So if you can imagine in uh, five and a half years ago this was a mowed front lawn and so we could have just kept this open, completely open, so that it was easy to move around, we could do our composting stuff, just keep it simple. Uh, but by adding this complexity and this diversity we're getting a number of layers of benefit. For example, these sunchokes, which are now seven or eight feet tall in the late season, not only do they provide late day shade, so that's off to the west, so the hens, a lot of hot days can be under this area, but imagine if you were a hawk trying to dive bomb in, there's no way you could navigate through that complexity. And it's a small space between these sunchokes and the next fence line over here. So if and when a hawk thinks it's going to come in and dive bomb the hens, if they run for shelter right under those sunchokes, they're pretty well protected. Here we've got black currants and then a huge beautiful elder, both of which provide free choice food and medicine for our hens. You can see the elders are just wrapping up, but all day, every day, we can come out and bop them and the hens will come through and pick those fruits up. Same thing with the currants. Again, they provide shade and shelter, a place to recreate and relax for our hens during the heat of the day. And if and when a hen, uh, a hawk tries to come through, there's yet another nook and cranny that they can get to within a few moments and <laughs> drop a poop. To the north of our chicken yard is where the busy, annoying road is. We've talked a whole lot about our living wall design. Mainly, we've looked at our living wall through the lens of providing us visual protection from the road. There goes a car, and you can't really see it. Additional layer of benefit is the road and the huge mowed lawn to the north of the road is a very open and active area for hawks. And again, a hawk off in the distance over there, perceiving a chicken and trying to think through how to navigate 
entering this space and then somehow dropping out to the ground and being able to lift off again and leave with a chicken. That's physically a near impossibility. Beyond that, having all these hazelnuts, all these uh, black currants and honeyberries, if you could pick out the 10 plus chickens that are currently under here, I'll give you a prize. I know I can't, but I just counted them before I started filming this shot. We love our hens. We also love wild beings. And we've talked before about making birdhouses and bee boxes for the wild creatures and beings in the landscape that could use some housing. I could pretend here that the design was intentional, that by associating wild birdhouses around our chicken, chicken yard, that we would get the additional layer of benefit of these wild birds being sentinels for hawks. But that just happened. And after the fact, we realized how beneficial that was. There are a number of different small bird species that come here each year. They really enjoy the soaked and sprouting grain in the chicken yard, the food scraps that we offer up. They raise their children in these boxes. The stakes are very high for them. Uh, if they see a hawk way off in the distance, they let the world know about it. And birds and our chickens, since they are all the same basic family, I believe, uh, they can share a common language and when the wild birds who are way more observant see or hear or sense a hawk and they start yelling to each other the chickens hear and they get out of the way. For a large part of the year this front yard is quite wet. We're on a north facing slope with poor drainage and so when I started to design this coop for our hens it's roughly seven feet by 12 feet. A couple things I thought at the same time. Number one it made sense to make it as large as the space could allow. It would give us the opportunity to increase the number of hens we raise here if we chose to, but keep a baseline of hens that have way more living space, sleeping space than is normally allotted per bird, just out of respect for their needs and for their comfort. So this space has a lot of room for them. If a hawk comes by or they're nervous or they're scared, they can pop in here pretty easily and relax and the entire space is completely wrapped in hardware cloth. Cost us a few hundred dollars at the outset but we do not worry about any predators getting into this space. With the wetness of the site we realized we needed to get this off the ground a little bit. We're also on a slope so I built the basic platform slightly elevated so the hens can get underneath. They use it for a dust bath, they use it for a place to relax and get out of the wind in the winter and they absolutely duck under here if they ever sense a hawk. <laughs> We're sure that there are many more ways to keep our hens healthier and safer in this world, but those are just a few ideas of what has worked pretty well for us in this small but productive complex system. It's more than 60 hens, over five and a half years of raising them, uh, they generate a tremendous amount of compost for us. They seem happy and healthy overall. We'd love to hear from you. Are there ways that you found that seem to help keep your hens safe and happy in the face of predation and stresses out in that wild world? Are there ways that you can think through to add more layers of value for the solutions that keep predators at bay, but also add some other function, beauty, value, and benefit in the landscape? We'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching.